It's a few days before Christmas. The residents of a small Scottish town prepare for the holidays. Danger is fast approaching. A devastating plane crash shatters a village and captures the attention of the world. The mystery is finally cracked by a piece of debris smaller than a fingertip. For weeks, German police have been following a group of suspected terrorists around the ancient town of Neuss. Today, they'll make their move. In the trunk of their car, police make an unusual discovery. Police raid apartments used by the two men. They find a number of blank passports and a small arsenal of weapons. When police closely examine the radio recovered from their car, they find it's wired with explosives. Two months later, Pan Am Flight 103 is on its way from London to New York. The jet has just taken off from Heathrow Airport. There are 259 people on board. Most of the passengers are American. The first part of the trip to the United States takes the plane northwest up over Scotland. The so-called Daventry departure is one of six preset routes that jets follow on their way out of Heathrow. Lockerbie is one of several small towns the plane will pass over. Enormous flames reach into the night sky. Somehow Pan Am Flight 103 has fallen from the sky and smashed into Lockerbie, Scotland. In the daylight, the full horror of the crash of Pan Am Flight 103 is obvious. An enormous crater is torn through the southern edge of the town. 1,500 tons of rock and earth have been blasted out of the ground. 11 people from Lockerbie are dead, along with all 259 people who were on board. It looked like a scene out of hell. This whole road was ablaze. I mean, just to show what it was like. When I was sitting with my aunt, a thing like a, a, an enormous mushroom fireball whizzed past the window and all I could think of was getting her out and throwing her down on the ground because I know that that's the safest place. Air crash investigators have arrived in Lockerbie within hours of the crash. More than a thousand police officers and 600 members of the military pour into Lockerbie. Any debris that's found is put into clear plastic bags and left to be collected later. Dark bags are used to store human remains. It's just days before Christmas, but the holiday spirit has been shattered. Pieces of the plane are scattered over an area larger than all of London, more than 2,000 square kilometers. It quickly becomes clear that Pan Am 103 was coming apart long before it hit the ground. A 747 is made up of more than 6 million parts. In the mangled remains of the jet, investigators need to find the one that will tell them what happened. The plane's cockpit is eerie proof that Pan Am Flight 103 broke apart in mid-air. Severed from the rest of the plane, it's four kilometers east of the city. Investigators estimate that the plane was loaded down with 90,000 kilograms of fuel. Just three and a half years before Lockerbie, a bomb had brought down an Air India jet just off the Irish coast. In that case, the plane and vital clues sunk deep to the bottom of the sea. But the wreckage of the Pan Am flight litters the Scottish lowlands. If it was a bomb, there's a chance that important evidence can be found. In the first 24 hours, four separate groups have claimed responsibility for bombing the jet. Six months earlier, the US Navy shot down an Iranian passenger jet. 290 people were killed. The American government claims it was an accident, but Iran has vowed revenge. Other threats had been made in the weeks before the crash. The American embassy in Helsinki received an anonymous warning that a bomb would soon be put on a Pan Am flight, leaving from Frankfurt. Officials eventually discounted the threat, but a notice was posted in American embassies. Many of the passengers who boarded Flight 103 had come from Frankfurt on a connecting flight. Then, on Christmas Eve, just three days after the crash of the plane, the investigation gets an enormous break. It's the first piece of wreckage from outside the town of Lockerbie to show any signs of being damaged by fire. 
The Scottish countryside is about to become the largest crime scene in the world. A British forensics lab has made the critical link. Traces of two chemicals used to make plastic explosives are found on the debris recovered near Lockerbie. On December the 28th, just seven days after the crash, investigators have their proof and announce it to the world. It has been established that two parts of the metal luggage pallets framework show conclusive evidence of a detonating high explosive. The crash of Pan Am Flight 103 is now officially a crime. With terrorism now the official cause, investigators are particularly interested in the hull of the aircraft. As the work continues, more pieces of the plane are found that show telltale blast damage. When they gather the pieces that are near the front of the plane, investigators make a chilling discovery. This is where the bomb had started ripping the plane apart. Not only do investigators now know it was a bomb, they know where it blasted through the fuselage of the plane. The investigators concentrate on the cargo containers that were found in the southern debris field, wreckage that was ejected shortly after the explosion. The metal container, AVE-4041, is of particular interest. It was resting directly behind frame 700, where the blast damage is the worst. Investigators create a simple framework and attach the pieces of the real cargo container to it. As they do, it becomes clear. AVE-4041 carried the bomb that brought the plane down. According to luggage records, it means that the bag containing the bomb had come from a connecting flight. While investigators are assembling a piece of the metal container, they discover a fragment of wreckage that doesn't belong. Eventually, forensic experts in Britain determined that the circuit board was a piece of a specific brand of radio. The radio cassette player had hidden the bomb. It's very similar to the one that was recovered by German police when they cracked the Palestinian terrorist cell two months before the bombing. 49 passengers who eventually boarded the Pan Am flight started their journey in the German city of Frankfurt. Their bags were placed onto Flight 103 in London, but the airline did not ensure the passengers who checked in the bag actually got onto the plane. Perhaps the bomb made in Germany had slipped through the cracks at Heathrow. While the terrorist walked away, there's a puzzling discovery. The difference in the model of radio being used raises doubts. While made by the same company, the cassette player used in the Lockerbie bombing is slightly different from the one that was seized in Germany. Perhaps the terrorists in Germany are not responsible. Perhaps the suitcase it was packed in can provide those clues. Studying small pieces of wreckage, British forensic experts find that the suitcase was a hard-sided Samsonite 4000. In 1988, Libya was reeling from a number of confrontations with the American military. Economic sanctions had been imposed, and its leader, Muammar Gaddafi, aggressively anti-American. Perhaps the bombing of the Pan Am flight was an attack by Libya against the United States. Pouring through baggage records for the Pan Am flight, police discover one piece of luggage that had been carried from Malta to Frankfurt earlier that day. Bag number B8849 had then been sent through to Britain's Heathrow Airport. Once there, it was placed on the second level of cargo container AVE-4041. It was the Samsonite case investigators now know carried the bomb. The Lockerbie bomb used a different timer and a different radio than the bomb found in Germany. Almost two years after the Lockerbie disaster, the criminal trail of evidence brings investigators to Zurich. The timer that detonated the bomb is traced to a Swiss company called Mebo. One of the owners of the company admits to building it. The timer was given to the Libyan government. Total of 20 of them were made, all delivered to Libyan officials. Early in the investigation, focus was directed at the Palestinian terrorist group in Germany. Now there's growing proof that they had nothing to do with the downing of Flight 103. Criminal investigators have linked the timer that detonated the bomb to Libya. And they know that Libya has a recent history of military confrontation with America. All they need now is the bomber himself. In 1999, they finally have him.
At the time of the disaster, Abdel al Mabrani was an intelligence officer for the Libyan government. He's arrested and charged. In 2001, Scottish judges sentence him to life for the murder of 270 people. Two years later, the government of Libya officially accepts responsibility for the bombing and pays $2.7 billion to the families involved. Anger is also aimed at Pan Am for the role it played in the disaster. A Scottish inquiry points a finger at the company. The passenger who checked the bomb onto flight 103 did not get on board. It's a fact that Pan Am could have discovered had it been following proper procedures. One of the changes that came about as a result of the Air India bombing was that airlines were forced to make sure no bag was put on a plane without a passenger accompanying it. It's called passenger baggage reconciliation. Without proper notification, Pan Am had stopped matching passengers and baggage at Heathrow Airport. The company was eventually found guilty of willful misconduct. After the crash and the court ruling, Pan Am declared bankruptcy.